All right. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Bless. Bless. Oh, thank you. Good job, Shirley. All right. Well, I'm going to ask it again and everybody answer like Shirley. How's everybody doing this morning? Bless. All right. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to be here today. And it's, I love that it's kind of getting fally. Not quite. But I wore my boots anyway. So, hey, you know, too. I'm going to. Hey, there you go. <laughs> boots all around. <laughs> All right. Well, we are down a couple musicians, so we are. Miss Caitlin here is going to be playing the piano today. So let's all give her some encouragement. <laughs> She's going to do awesome. All right. Well, let's start out today in worship with us. Everybody stand. Yes. All right. Today, uh, once again, our first song is the Father's House, and you know we. Uh, this is the Father's House, and um, as as. As right now, seemingly small as we are, I think we can make it feel really full. And with God's help in the spirit, it'll sound that way. So sing along with us as we do the Father's house. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And the story isn't over if my story's just begun. No vengeance no of my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, we're in the father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome. The end game, the journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over if my story isn't good. Oh, failure's never final when the father's in the room. And failure's never final when the father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds are shaking. 
today. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're going to still sing Still Rolling Stones. And again, I mean, first time self-taught in a month or two. Isn't she doing a great job? First time now singing and playing. So here we go. And I have allergy stuff going on right now, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> Out of the shadows, bound for the gallows, a deadly walking to love keep calling. Rise up, rise up.
are still rolling stones. Praise him today. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Good morning. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I need this. How about you? Amen. All right. Announcements. We skip prayer requests. Well, here. So we got prayer requests, guys. They're very important. We take them in the lobby, and we take them on Wednesday nights, and we pray for you guys all the time. So if you need anything, please feel free to reach out to Christy or any of us or just put an anonymous anywhere, even in the tithes and offerings. Okay, guys? Tuesday, September 15th, uh, this Tuesday night, Men in the Way, we're going to meet, whether there's two of us or there's 20 of us, we're going to talk about all of our problems, okay? We're going to help each other out. Uh, Thursday, September 17th, the real women are going to meet, and like I said a couple weeks ago, they're going to talk about us Men in the Way, okay? Okay. Real, extraordinary, awesome. Oh, okay. Awesome. Put the devil real. Yeah. <laughs> Starting Monday, September 21st, the Truth Project. Enlighten me on the Truth Project. So the Truth Project is um, a series that uh, kind of a kind of a Bible study. They're starting on Monday nights to talk about. Um, you know, some of, sometimes you'll go up to somebody and you'll try to tell them about Christ, and maybe they'll say, well, well, if God is so great, then how come bad things happen to good people, right? So this is going to um, kind of kind of give you some um, knowledge, some ammunition, some scripture to be able to really uh, kind of battle those kinds of, of things that people say, uh, just make you more equipped. So it's going to be a good time. It's from 6 to 8. All right, the Truth Project. And we don't have it on our announcements, but we still want to do the 40 days of prayer for the election starting September 25th. We want God to intervene. We want God to direct us, not men. We don't care which side of the aisle you're voting for. We just want God's decisions, okay? And then after that, on Friday the 26th, we're still thinking about and wanting to put together. I'm sorry, the 26th is a Saturday, or is it a Friday? I don't know which day it is. Uh, we're wanting to put together eight hours of prayer. That's a Saturday. Okay. We would only need you guys for 30 minutes to an hour, and really that hour goes fast. Um, the last one we did, I partook of it, and um, it's a great thing for the church. It's a great thing for yourself, and it um, really points you in the right direction and gets you focused. So let us know if you're interested in that. Sunday, September 27th, um, guest Pastor Pudge and Sister Sludge. Um, they say they're funny, but we are pretty funny here, so I'm really waiting to see if they can top us, okay? Wednesday, October 7th is a new one, The Way's Got Talent. I like it. We're going to have a talent contest. Bring your specialties in. If I remember, there was some um, animal noises last time, um, so top that. I think we need buzzes, Heidi. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, lastly, if anyone would like to send Buddy anything while he's AWOL, um, right here we've got an address so you guys can mail him goodies, and he did say he would share. So if our ushers will come forward, we'll now do tithes and offerings. All right. If you all bow your heads with me in prayer. Father God, you are so good to us. Please let us to give a little back. Um, it's yours anyway, Lord. Help us to love you and praise you like we should. And let this offering be pleasing to you, Father God. We thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Please be with those that are not able to join us right now. And help us to be good Christians through the week. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You know, I'm continually amazed about how God shows up when we just trust him. Amen. Uh, so many things um, have happened and, 
and, and, and I just continue to say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I know you're going to take care of it. And he always does. And then I'm like, oh, wow, he really did that. So, you know, just if that gives you any sort of hope today, just put your trust in God. Uh, after you give your tithes and offerings, feel free to stand and let's worship. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. talks about that there's no mountain he won't climb up there's no wall he won't kick down and he's no lie he won't tear down and I think that's so important in all of our lives that we know that here is nothing that he won't do for us sing it out with us there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Serve it, still you. 
help us help us to do your will each and every day lord jesus that we would know that we would know your love that we could show your love to others and that we can be there for others that are in their time of need lord jesus be with the prayer request be with them be with everybody on that list lord jesus we know that you know the need we know that you know each and every person's need and you will meet it individually lord jesus and that you hear our prayers lord jesus be with brother davis he brings us the word today that we would use it and apply it to our lives in jesus name we pray amen and you may be seated buddy has a quick message that he recorded this morning for us he probably won't be able to do that for a month or so so he has a few words good morning it is 5 41 here in jackson south carolina and it is 4 30 your time my time too uh Getting used to this, getting up early, uh, everything's going pretty good. Actually, it's going really good right now. Uh, they're going to turn the heat up on us come Tuesday, and we're going to start doing a lot more stuff once we get medically cleared for everything. But I uh, just wanted to just give a quick hello. Uh, miss you all. Love you all. Um, thank you for your love and support. The calls, texts, messages have just been overwhelming, and I truly miss every one of you. And uh, still praying for everybody in my mind. I'm going through row by row, and uh, just praying for you all. Thank you so much for not only supporting me, but Christy uh, during this time. And uh, just keep on keeping on. You know, we are uh, we are the church as individuals and uh, you are the church as well. So let's get recharged today. Let's uh, hear the word of God and then let's put it into action as uh, we exit the doors. So I love you all. Thank you for everything. Again, your love, support, your prayers has just been overwhelming. Have a great day, and God bless each and every one of you. I'll talk to you soon. All right, let's welcome Dave. Hello. I'm sorry, guys. I just heard my voice. You're going to have to listen to it. Ooh. Okay. But it's a, uh, it's a tool to teach you where you stand in Christ. Because throughout, well, we have it written up here on the wall. Who did this side? The truth. That's our Lord. And when we know him, we're free to walk in his ways. Okay. Come out. Tuesday night, this has already been said, but I'm just putting a different plug in there. For the men's meeting, come out Wednesday night, hear Ashton finish her teaching on apologetics, and come out Thursday night, something about women. Authentic, awesome, exceptional, okay. Yeah. Come out to this. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, you're a gracious God, and Lord, I ask that your word would go forth today, not mine, and Lord, that your Holy Spirit would begin to work in each heart right now, Father God, tuning their ear and their spirit to what you have to say, Father, and Lord, I ask for more than that. I ask that they'd walk out here and obey it, Father, and Lord, that we become 
the soldiers that you want us to be, the salt and the light of this world. In your precious name, amen. Okay, we're going to be coming out of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. And we're going to go ahead and come out of, uh, read it from the, uh, the voice. Now, a lot of you probably have never heard of the voice translation. Voice translation is, you know how Eugene Peterson did the message? You know, it's a paraphrase. Well, the voice is a paraphrase too, but it's 70 scholars got together and worked on this paraphrase. So that's what I'm going to be reading from today. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. So everybody ready? You can read it up here if you don't have, most of you probably don't have the voice Bible with you, but it's up on the screen. So since we stand surrounded by all those who have gone before, an enormous cloud of witnesses, let us drop every extra weight, every sin that clings to us and slackens our pace. Let us run with endurance the long race before us. Now, stay focused on Jesus, who designed and perfected our faith. He endured the cross and ignored the shame of that death because he focused on the joy that was set before him and now is seated beside God on the throne of God in a place of honor. Consider the life of the one who endured such personal attacks and hostile, hostility from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Among you, in your striving against sin, none has resisted the pressure to the point of death as he did. Indeed, you have seemed to have forgotten the proverb directed toward you as children. My child, do not ignore the instruction that comes from the Lord, or lose heart when he steps in to correct you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and corrects each one he takes as his own. Endure hardship as God's discipline. Rejoice that he is treating you as his children. For if a child does not experience discipline from a parent, okay, for what child doesn't experience discipline from a parent? But if you are not experiencing the correction that the true children receive, then maybe you're not a child, uh, one of his children at all. Remember, when, you are, when your human parents disciplined us, we respected them. If that was true, shouldn't we respect and live under the correction of the Father of all spirits even more? Our parents corrected us for a time as it seemed good to them, but God corrects us to do, corrects us to our good so that we may share in his holiness. When the punishment is happening, it never seems pleasant. Amen to that? Only painful. Later, though, it yields the peaceful fruit called righteousness to everyone who has been trained by it. So lift up your hands that are dangling, brace your weakened knees, make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame in you won't be put out of joint but will heal. Pursue peace with everyone and holiness since no one will see God without it. That last phrase, no one will see God without holiness. I know about you guys, but I don't feel very holy at times. But I want to be, I want to see God. Okay, so I titled this Running with Jesus. And I, there were handouts out front. I don't know if everybody got one. If not, I got copies here. And if I can get somebody to volunteer, Mike, just hand them out. There, we'll take Chrissy's going to take the other side. Okay. And now I'm going to clear something up right at the beginning. You see something written at the bottom? And you probably go, what in the world does that mean? 
I, I came up with a life statement about 10 years ago. And I would encourage everyone to come up with a life statement for them, what their, their purpose in life is, what their direction is. And I think you see it there. It says, I'm a cross-eyed sheep following the good shepherd down Route 66, keeping the change. And that probably doesn't mean anything to anybody. But let's walk through it a little bit here. Cross-eyed lamb. Okay, I'm the cross-eyed lamb. I'm God's lamb. Cross-eyed means my eyes are focused on the cross. Okay. I'm following the good shepherd, which is Jesus, down Route 66, which is the Bible, 66 books. Okay. Keeping the change means I don't want to lose what God has done in my life. Keeping that change. Uh, underneath that is my email address. It, this has become my key verse. Hebrews 12, 2, cross-eyed. Okay, so that's where we're coming from today. Let's run with Jesus. Any questions so far? Can everybody hear me? You're allowed to yell... Amen, go for it, preach it, whatever you want to do, okay? You can yell stop, that doesn't mean I will, but you can yell it, okay? Therefore, anytime you get down and out in your Christian walk, just remember what that therefore is in the first verse of chapter 12, and that is chapter 11, all these men and women of faith. Because chapter 11 says it's the hall of fame of faith. And that's where the writer of Hebrews went through everybody, Abraham, all the way through about their faith in God and how they stood. So remember, we don't run alone. And we have a proven course. There's a race set up before us that by our Savior. How many ran cross country in life? Anybody ever run cross country in school? Okay. I did, believe it or not. I wasn't always a fat boy. I did. Did run a little bit, but it was great when we ran on our home course because I knew our home course. But when we went to somebody else's course that I didn't know, it was, boy, it was tough because I'd be following this crowd. First, if you run on a new course, you want to follow the crowd, Connie. And I'd be looking and I'd say, yeah, oh, the course is going that way. And all of a sudden, what's going on? Because they knew the course and I didn't. Well, we have a, not only those who ran before us who know the course, looking down upon us as a great crowd of witnesses, we have the one who designed the course, Jesus Christ himself. But in order to run that course, we must what? Get rid of some baggage. Now, is there anybody here who doesn't have any baggage? I quite a bit, okay. How many enjoy sinning? Nobody else enjoys sinning? Then why do you do it? I mean, we enjoy sin. We enjoy what it offers. That's why we even do it. We're tempted to do it. We wouldn't be tempted to do something that we didn't enjoy. So until we come to that point where we admit that we enjoy what is offered to us, there's no turning away from that. Because physically, mentally, we've got our eyes set Hey, that looks like pleasure. That looks like fun. That looks like something I need in my life. And sin doesn't always have to be the sexual and addictions and all those things. Sin could be just walking away from the direction God has you going at that time. Like when God says, I want you to talk to that young man there, Dave. And I said, nah, I don't want to talk to him. That's sinning too because it was more enjoyable for me not to talk to him. So we have to see that sin is something that, because if you were Satan, how would you get people Go away from God. Breaking rocks with a pick, would you say, okay, if I can get them to just break rocks with picks, they won't, they'll turn from God. No, you'll find something joyful for them to turn from God. So we have to see that sin is enjoyable. But, as the Bible says, only for a while. It means death. But sin 
is the traps that Jesus, I mean Jesus, hello, the traps that Satan uses to take us into bondage. I'm going to talk to you about the traps. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, it gives desire of the flesh, desire of the eyes, and desire uh, the pride of life. Desires of the flesh, sexual sins, addictions. They are more of an appetite or a desire. The Eskimos up in Alaska, the way they catch wolves, because they use the wolves' fur, and they also eat the wolves. They take a hunting knife, a big hunting knife, and they coat it with blood of a seal or a walrus and freeze it. And then they do it again. They put quite a few layers on it. Then they'll take that knife out and they'll plant it in the snow with the blade sticking up. Wolves have such a keen smell that they come around looking for something and all of a sudden they smell that blood and they go up and investigate and they'll start licking it. Then they start tasting that blood. And they'll stay there and lick that knife all night long until they bleed to death because they have ribbed their tongues and they bleed to death and therefore the expo goes out, collects them, and has the fur and the meat. That's what sin is a lot of times. The, the <coughs> excuse me, desires of the flesh. It looks so good and we get involved in it, and before we know it, we're bled out. Because we got involved in it. We need not always go for things that pleases our appetite. So you have to watch out for those traps. I think we've all been in them at times. I have. Thank God that's the past. Does that mean it's never going to happen again? I don't think so. But it's still there. And every now and then that desire does pop up. That's why I have to take it to the Word of God and put my focus, focus my eyes not on that, but on the cross set before me. The desires of the eyes. You know, over in India, they like to eat monkey brains. They like to do it live. They put the monkey in the middle of the table, and, you know. I don't know why. It doesn't sound good to me, but it's a specialty over there. You know how they catch your monkeys so they're alive? They take these vases, wide mouth, come down, you know, and they have that little sh narrow neck, and they put jewels in them. Monkey likes jewels. They like things that are shining. So they'll stick their hands down in there to get the jewel. Well, what they have to do is pull it out. They have to close their fist. When they do, that fist will not come back up out of the jar. Of course, they have the jars chained down so that they don't go run around with a jar on their hand. But you guys can laugh. You guys can say stuff. Okay. And that monkey will not let go of that because he wants the jewel more than anything else. That's the way a lot of things the desires of the eyes are to us. We see it. We, it could be wealth. It could be pride. It could be a lot of things. We focus our eyes on them, and, but we don't let go. And sometimes that leads us astray because we're not following the offer of our faith and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. We're not running that right race. The third trap is the pride of life. And this is more of a complacency. There's a tribe down in Africa that has this, I don't know which river it is. I wish I would have found that out, but I didn't. Uh, flow through their tribe. And the ducks would come in every, I guess it would be fall down there, or every season that they hibernate, they'd come down there and land on the river. Well, the tribesmen said, hmm, that would be good eating. But every time they went into the river to get to ducks, Therefore, they didn't have their little 12-gauge like we do. But, and spirits don't work very good at getting flying ducks. I don't know. But they couldn't catch them. Well, someone in the tribe became, we have a lot of gourds here and pumpkins. Let's go upstream from the ducks and put them in the river and let them flow down between the ducks. At first, the ducks, you know, swimming along and all of a sudden, that doesn't belong here. I'm out of here. We saw these gourds floating down the river. So, but after a while, they learned that there was no danger in the pumpkins and the gourds. 
So they said, ah, they're just a board or a pumpkin. Well, then these natives said, let's hollow out the inside of these, uh, these pumpkins, gourds, and they put them over their heads, and they got in the river, and they'd float down the river. And then they'd float right in between the ducks and they'd reach to grab their feet and pull them under. Complacency. The frog in the hot water. You've heard that one before where you can put a frog in water and heat it up a little bit at a time and it'll sit there and cook. Well, these ducks said, hey, these pumpkins and gourds have never bugged us. But all of a sudden we see our brothers and sisters disappearing. They're right there and all of a sudden we turn around and they're gone because these natives are taking these uh, ducks back to the tribe to enjoy. That's how the pride of life is with us a lot of times. We get the uh, eyes and we say, oh, this is not really that bad. It's, it's foreign to what we're used to, but it's not really wrong. Is there anything wrong with a pumpkin floating down a river? Unless there's a head in it. Well, some of the things that we think, hey, there's nothing really wrong with, but is it separating us from our Savior? And I'll just go ahead and put you know, river in there, the river of life. Is it separating us from who we need to be with? So we really need to look at the sins in our life. And if there's anyone here who wants to stand up and say, I have no sin, you're more than welcome to stand up now. Okay. Okay. I want you to make sure you know that I'm sitting. Okay. So we need to watch out for traps. Traps are set for us. We need to fix our eyes in verse 2 of Hebrews here. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. That's where we need to keep our eyes at. It's so easy to get our eyes on things of this world. It's hard to live in the world and not see the things of the world. But what we need to do is take those things we see in the world and bring them back to here, the Scripture. Because I tell you, probably one of the hardest races I've ever run in my life was because I forsaked the workouts before. The pain in the side, all that stuff. And I think that's true in our Christian walk. We get away from the training, from following the, our God. Excuse me, I need to blow my nose. Sorry. Or we're going to have a mess. I'm going to turn the mic off. Test one, two, come back on, okay. We get caught up in the world. Because I do believe in working, because I do believe in eating, as you can tell. But, so it takes me away from the things of the word sometimes, because I get so caught up in my profession to put food on the table that I don't get into the word, which keeps me right with the world, keeps me right with him so that I'm not in the world. So we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. How many deer hunters do we have here? Okay. I learned a long time ago that if I go out deer hunting, I don't shoot the rabbit just because it hops up, even though it's food, because I'll never see the deer. And so many times when we put our eyes on Christ, Satan will have these little things jump up that are game good for us and he wants us to go after them a rabbit trail or a squirrel trail or whatever when the focus is him so anyone who goes hunting and starts shooting things every first thing he sees he's not going to see a deer he's lost his focus already what he was going for he will not get because he has made enough noise that any deer with well sense would say there's somebody over there shooting I don't want to be in that neighborhood. And that's the way Satan does. We'll get our focus and we'll get going good and all of a sudden something pops up that is not really bad. It could fill my belly. It could fill my desire. But it's taking me away from my one true desire. So fix your eyes on Jesus to finish. You need to finish the race that you've set before you. It's funny how I used to do this all the time, and it's really easy, but nowadays it's hard. 
In order to run with Jesus, we must train with Jesus. It's learning. Let's read 3 and 4, and then I'll get into it. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Sometimes we think, oh, man, God, when are you going to come take me or get this rapture going on? I'm saying hi to a little kid looking at me. But we're not even close to death yet. But Jesus came and Dean did not even resist death. Sometimes we resist getting up early in the morning and spending time with him. Or resist going to church. And how many knows that this doesn't save you? If you don't, let me tell you, it won't save you. You're just wasting your time if you're coming here for salvation. You have to go to Christ for salvation. We are his body coming together to worship our Savior. That's all we are. We're the body. I hope that you guys don't take that. I'm saying don't come to church. No. Come to church. Get to know some of your fellow believers. But we must get to the point where we have only one desire in our life, and that is to become the child of God he wants us to be. And we forget that we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Think about that. I got the almighty creator, redeemer, provider in my life. He's here. Jesus Jesus even said to his disciples, I have something better for you than you walking with me. Now think about that. You're the disciples. You're walking with the Son of God for three years. And Jesus says, I have something that's even better for you. Now, I don't know if I'd be willing to give up the live Son of God here by my side physically. That would be kind of awesome to just think. He says, I have something better for you, and that is... I will send the Holy Spirit, which is God, and he will dwell within you, and he will teach you the things I have taught you. Isn't that awesome? Just think about that. The one who said, let there be light. Now, I can do that trick if you want to see it. I can have somebody stand over by the light switch, turn it off, and I said, let there be light, and it'll come on. But that's not very awesome, is it? But think of total darkness and said, let there be light. Boom, it's there. Okay? You know, us like Christians think we're kind of unique because we bring light to the world, but we're not, we're not that great. That's my wife. Okay. Probably the things that don't get done at the house are electrical because I'm an electrician, so there we go. But we need to see that we have the Almighty in us, that He is there. Now, the thing with sin is. You need to repent of it, and then forget it. Because Satan likes that little game, too. You did something. You went out and did something, whatever sin it is. Then you come to the Lord, and you ask for forgiveness. Satan likes to stay right here and say, nah, -uh. it's not that easy. You ask for forgiveness, he forgives you, but he's still holding it against you. You need to forget it. Because Christ has already forgotten it. So we just need to remember when we do repent, that doesn't mean that some of the results won't be from that sin. I'll just use a strange one. I killed my wife. That's a simple one. Even though I repent of that, there's still results of that sin that will never be the same. You will always have results of the sin you do but you'll be forgiven of it. So I'll never have my wife back if I kill her. So that's how you need to think about sin does have consequences, and it will stay with you, but you are forgiven of it if you come to our Savior. Okay, the last one is healing. You need healing if you're going to run the race with crowd. See, I've got about two more hours, right? Versus... Uh, about that. Verses 5 through 11 or 14. Well, let's first talk about 
Romans 12, 1 and 2, one of my favorite verses in Scripture. Let's turn there. I'm reading from the ESV. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. What's the difference between being alive and living? Is there a difference? Well, God in your life, that's a good one. Anything else? Being, I'm alive. But what makes me, what's the difference between me being alive and living? Very good concept. It kind of ties in with where I'm coming at. How many of you have been to a zoo? And you see a, a lion and an elephant, they are alive, aren't they? But are they really living? Are they doing what's natural to them? Are they doing, okay? Uh, how many saw the movie Madagascar? Okay, you had four characters in there. You have Alex, the lion, Marty, the zebra, Gloria, the hippo. Is that what she was? Yeah, a rhino, hippo, something she was. And you had a uh, good old Melman. He was the giraffe, okay? Four different characters there. You had Alex. Hey, look at me. I think you see these four characters in the church. You have the Alexes running around. Hey, look at me. Then you got Marty's hands. Man, there has to be more than this. He's running on a treadmill. He's trying to get some. This is, this is dumb in a cage, you know. Alex was enjoying it because everybody was, look at the line, you know. Gloria, I don't think she knew where, what, they, what was going on. I think she was just in her own little world. If I remember the movie pretty much. She was always, you know, happy. Everything was okay with her. Then you have Melman. She thought he was going to die every five seconds. There's always something wrong with him. I think we have those people too. I think it's not only in the church, but I think we have them in the world, you know. Those are basically the four different characteristics of people in the life. Those that want to be looked at, those that says there has to be something better than this, those who don't have an idea of what's going on, then good old Melvin, you know, sees an ant and he's going to die, you know, or see, you know, he's got a fever, you know, and he has one tenth of a degree over or something. We have to become living sacrifices, not just alive to Christ, not just coming to know him but living out his word, living naturally. That I mean, for a lion to be natural, it would be out in the wild, ruling. That would be the true lion, okay? Zebra was out running in the fields. We have to be people that live out the word of God. We have to be people that are living, not just alive. Most of the time, if you stood up here where I'm at, you'd say, are they alive? You guys are, but you know, you can throw things at me if you want. Just make sure I know you're alive. Praise you, okay. <laughs> we have to be people moving with our God. And so many times I've been guilty of just being alive in Christianity. But there's so much more. We have to live it. That's how we are healed. The healing comes when we start taking these drapey arms and start lifting them and start using them for his kingdom. We start taking these weak knees, feeble knees, and put them back in joint and walking that path that he has put us on, running that race. But we have to be obedient to our Savior. Sometimes if we were as obedient to our Savior as we are to the enemy, we'd be some great Christians. A lot of times we take the little lies the enemy gives us and we take, grab them and say, well, that's true. That's the way I feel. That's what's happening. 
And we live that better and we do what the Word of God says. Or we take the experts, so-called experts in our world, and believe what they say. That must be true. They're experts. Ha, ha. Okay? And some are. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound. But we need to be people that are healed, and we need to get right doing his work. Okay? And not be transformed by this world, because... It will squeeze you. The world will squeeze you into its mode if you let it. But you have that choice. Let me give you a little... Well, let's look at verse 14. We need to be people... Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. We need to strive for peace with everyone. And for the holiness which no one, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. We need to start living holy lives as a people of God. Not a religious life. Not a good life. Not a super spiritual life. But we need to live a holy life. And that means walking after him. We need to give our all to Jesus. I'm going to give you a little story here at the end. It's called the pig and the chicken. Now, are you a pig for Christ? Those that were at the first service do not answer this. Are you a pig for Christ or a chicken for Christ? Anybody want to take a vote? How many chickens do we have for Christ? How many pigs do we have for Christ? Well, I see the first service there a little bit, but okay. Okay. Mr. Pig and Mrs. Pig were up bright and early one morning. They were out there sitting on the hilltop, grassy land there. And they were watching the sun come up. And Mr. Pig turned to Mrs. Chicken and said, You know what? We have a great master. He provides us all the food we want. And, you know, he's always taking care of us. In fact, last year when I got sick, he had the veterinary come out and give me a shot of medicine, and, you know, I got well. And Mrs. Chicken said, you know what? He is pretty good. He built that chicken coop for me and my family. And when the old fox started coming around, she took care of the fox. I don't see the fox anymore. And they get talking about all the great things they have on the farm, you know, dry place to sleep, you know, and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Pig says, let's go make him breakfast, show him our appreciation. So they started walking toward the house, you know, and the pig goes, wait, 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 wait. Breakfast, ham and eggs, he says, I don't think so. He says, for you to provide breakfast for a master, you have to give an egg. For me, it's my life. That is what Christ desires of each of us, for us to give him our life so that we may live through him. We're so good at getting eggs. Because it doesn't take anything to give an egg. Well, I don't know. I never laid one. But uh, I figure you just take intake and output. But life, that's everything. That's the difference between being committed and contributing Christianity. Worship team, more than welcome to come up. But I'd like for you guys to really think about this, and I'm going to stay up here by the altars. I'm going to turn off my mic, so if you do come up to me, it won't be on. But I'll be here to pray for you, or you can just come and pray. you stand today and worship with us and as he said the altars are open the splendor of a king
majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice sing it with us today how great churchgoers, but be in the instruments of righteousness in a world full of sin. There's people out there that have no clue what's going on, and you're the light that God has called. Let's start being pigs for Christ, totally committed, giving our all, our all, everything to Him not just showing up one day a week or two days a week, but actually be his servants. Lord, as we go from here, I just pray, Father God, that we live out the life that is in us, which is you, Father God, and people would see you over our personalities, over our careers, over our lives, Father God. They'd see that we have light in us that is pointing the, the way, Father Lord, time's coming short. There's no doubt about it, Father God. Let's be about your business, Father. Oh, let's follow you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
God bless you all, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Have a great week.